Sober up. COVID-19 respects no national borders. Sebelum kamu nonton video ini, jangan lupa pencet tombol subscribe karena subscribe itu gratis. Dan juga jangan lupa pencet tombol lonceng agar kamu selalu update video terbaru dari channel ini. Sudah beberapa hari sejak instruksi stay at home berlaku di Indonesia. Nah, masih banyak orang keliaran, tapi di Surabaya terutama ini sudah mulai sepi. Dan di video kali ini, gue bakal liatin suasana di Surabaya dan antisipasi yang dilakukan pemerintah Surabaya oke okay banget. Very good job teh buat kamu. Please jangan remehkan virus ini. Better you stay at home. Dan di video kali ini aku juga bakal tampilkan beberapa keadaan di luar negeri, di luar Surabaya, di luar Indonesia, bagaimana keadaan negara lain yang sedang benar-benar mengisolasi diri. Dan juga di akhir video nanti juga akan ada penjelasan beberapa ahli mengenai virus corona. So stay tuned in this video. Penyemprotan apa mer? Penyemprotan antibakteri corona. Antibakteri corona. Di Surabaya. Surabaya. Hebat Bu Risma. Hetma. Hebat nih Purisma programnya. Kita di jalan pun disemprot. Semprot. Wow, Antivirus. Antivirus corona. Corona. Wah. Buka sedikit. Masuk. Ya, masuk. Antivirus. Antivirus corona. Kelihatan tak? Sengaja. Sengaja. Lumayan mobil. Ini. Kita juga semprot lagi mobilnya semprot mobil emir kena semprot mobilnya juga. semprot woi keren woi bapaknya oh, antibakteri pak bapaknya keren pak <laughs> penyemprotan apa mir penyemprotan antibakteri corona antibakteri corona di surabaya surabaya hebat oleh purisma hetma Hebat nih Purisma programnya. Kita di jalan pun disemprot. Semprot. Wow, antivirus. Hebat. Antivirus corona. Corona. Wah. Buka sedikit. Masuk. Ya, masuk. Antivirus. Antivirus corona. Tidak kelihatan tak? Sengaja. Sengaja. Oh, lumayan mobil. Kita juga semprot ikut semprot lagi mobilnya semprot mobil emir kena semprot mobilnya juga. semprot woi keren woi bapaknya oh, antibakteri pak bapaknya keren pak <laughs> Kalau tadi udah lihat keadaan di TP yang sepi, nah ini di Sutos juga, ini malam padahal Juga pada sepi semua Ini parkirannya, kita bakal lihat Di dalam ya Nih keadaannya Memang sepi sih, orang-orang udah mulai social distancing Tapi karena gue masih harus ngejob, jadi Ada yang tutup juga Jadi mau nggak mau terpaksa nih Hari terakhir gue keluar nih kayaknya Karena kita lebih baik mulai jaga nih Adanya kayak gini nih Ini di Town Square, Surabaya So, nah nih 
kondisi Town Square Surabaya di hari ini biasa Starbucks yang perlu sesak pun agak lengang hari ini ya jadi benar-benar karena ini udah kontrak aja kita tetap main Hari di Surabaya jalanan juga mulai udah agak sepi di sini. Orang-orang udah udah pada mulai lockdown. Wabah penyakit yang sampai detik ini melanda dunia. Menghimbau dan memohon sesegera untuk meninggalkan tempat. Ah. Mas. barang dapur ke, ubat-ubatan ke, makanan Boleh, ke yeah. satu family, tak kira lah kita kerja dengan siapa-siapa hmm. bos kita ke apa ke, satu family hanya satu orang saja kalau degil juga apa semua, kita boleh ambil tindakan
dan sebelum kita masuk ke penjelasan para ahli mengenai virus ini mungkin penggunaan hand sanitizer udah menjadi sesuatu yang wajib nih di era-era beberapa minggu beberapa bulan ini nah, tetapi hati-hati jika kamu memakai hand sanitizer hati-hati kalau kena api dan penjelasannya bisa kita saksikan di video berikut ini Halo guys ada berita seorang ibu habis membalut, membilas tangannya dengan hand sanitizer tidak sadar langsung menyalakan kompor karena apa yang terjadi, kedua tangannya terbakar hebat sekarang kita buktikan apa betul hand sanitizer ini sangat berbahaya bagi api yuk kita buktikan ya nah, pertama kita keluarkan dulu nah, setelah itu kita buktikan di sini, Mas Danang. Ini ada lidi, sebatang lidi. Kita nyalakan korek. Coba dibakar. Kebakar apa tidak ya? Oh, ternyata kebakar. Ternyata kebakar. Sekarang kita surut di sini. Wow, nah, apa yang terjadi ya? Memang luar biasa. Ini bertahu ya tambah pengalaman ya, karena di dalam satu teser itu ada alkohol kandungan 70%, sedangkan 40% aja dinyalakan sudah menyala, apalagi 70%. Nah, jadi hati-hati ya guys, habis membilas tangan, jangan merokok ya, jangan merokok. Atau menyalakan kompor Intinya jangan dekat-dekat Dengan sumber api Sebelum tangan kita kering betul Oke okay guys, semoga bermanfaat Salam Sober up COVID-19 respects no national borders No social bounds No political systems And no cultural values It hits us just as hard It levels the world Facing the pandemic It is not what happened matters It is how we respond. For almost a month, it infected thousands in Wuhan in a day, and every hospital bed was occupied. Now, empty beds and closed wards in the city. How did China make it? It is nothing new, but it's worthy to know. According to an initial WHO report, an infected person appears to spread it to an average of 2.6 people. And after 10 generations of transmission, with each taking five or six days, that one initial case has spawned 3,500 in matters of days. And that is what the world is seeing. What China did is to break the cycle by human intervention. The scale unprecedented in history. Extreme, draconian, and aggressive. These are the words used to describe China's response. But now, People have come to terms with the new norm, lockdown. Some people say, isn't that a violation of individual rights? Actually, the balance between individual rights and public safety is always an ever-changing equation. After 9-11, all the airports in the world began to impose draconian safety checks on passengers, and people accepted it because we traded a little of our freedom for the greater good of the public. China imposed the largest and most draconian quarantine in history. Factories shut, public transport stopped, and people stayed indoors. By doing that, it flattened the curve. On one hand, China avoided many millions of cases.
It's linked it to free health care. While in Singapore, every infection case is followed and dealt with. Bit by bit, every country is testing its methods through trial and error. Some paid a high price, and some set a high bar. We should all move ahead with humility. There is no decision without trade-offs, and most of all, there is nothing without skin in the game. And now, the whole world has learned, or is learning, to play. Um, no, uh, COVID-19 is not airborne. Uh, COVID-19 uh, transmits via droplets, and what we mean are these small little particles of uh, moisture, liquid. These particles, when they come out of your mouth, they drop, and so that's why we say between one and two meters. Anything beyond that, they don't um, disperse. Um, so no, it's not airborne. It's through close contact and through respiratory. Droplets. Um, but the one thing I should say is that in healthcare facilities, we do tell healthcare workers that when they are treating patients, very sick patients, where they have to intubate them, and sometimes you have particles that could be dispersed much further than just that one to two meters. And so, in those situations, we tell healthcare workers you have to use airborne precautions. And so, there may be some confusion out there when we say airborne precautions. Those are for healthcare workers. Performing very specific procedures, but for every day, no.、Um, and what they've learned from more than seventy thousand cases in China is that very few people actually have runny nose or actually sneeze. Most people will have a fever. Most people will have a cough. What we do worry about is anyone that has shortness of breath or chest pain to make sure that they seek healthcare、uh, very quickly. So I'm not aware of any evidence that this virus. Transmits between pets and people. There's a lot of investigations that are that are on underway.、Um, they have not found this virus in an animal yet.、Uh, in the zoonotic source of what we、mm -hmm. what we believe initially that this outbreak began with people who were in contact with wild animals, not、yes. pets.、Um, but we have no evidence of this virus in pets, and no evidence of this virus transmitting between pets and people.、Um, I think you can use swimming pools just just fine. Many swimming pools have chlorine in them,、um, and we haven't heard of any transmission happening uh, in uh, swimming pools. So there are some studies that are ongoing right now that look at virus survival. We don't have the full、um, results yet,、uh, but what we know from other coronaviruses like SARS and like MERS is that on packages, on certain like cardboard materials,、mm -hmm. that it doesn't last very long. What is important, though, on certain other surfaces like plastic, that the virus can be inactivated by disinfectants. So, if you want to know more about disinfectants and disinfecting your surfaces, go to the WHO site. Go in and look at the guidance.、Mm -hmm. You'll find it under coronavirus, and you'll find all that information there. Just because you have a fever and a cough doesn't mean that you're infected with COVID-19.、Um, that's really important. It's also flu season. You know, so there's a lot of people around who have the sniffles, who have a cough, who have a fever. Talk to your colleague, express your concerns, talk to your employers, and just see how can you make sure that you、uh, continue to be able to work.、Uh, and there's a lot of ways in which you can work from home if that's possible with your with your type of job. Sounds very simple. It doesn't sound very exciting, but it is incredibly important that you make sure that you wash your hands with soap and water. And if you don't have soap and water, you can use an alcohol-based rub.、Um, the second thing that you can do is what we call Respiratory etiquette: a sneeze or cough into your elbow, or you use a tissue,、uh, and then you throw that tissue away, and then you make sure you wash your hands. And the third thing that is really important is to educate yourself. So make sure that you have the latest information from WHO, from trusted sources.、Uh, this is a rapidly changing situation, and so the more we learn, the more we want you to know about this. And by Educating yourself, you can make sure that you protect yourself and you protect your family. WHO recommends that you wear a mask if you're sick. There's a lot of things that you can do to protect yourself while traveling, and that is making sure that you you travel when you're well, you know, you're feeling well, you and your family.、Um, making sure again, you wash your hands a lot, you practice respiratory hygiene, making sure that when you eat food, you know, you're eating cooked food, and so just wearing a mask in general,、um, no, but making sure that if you're having symptoms, respiratory symptoms, that you wear a mask. And what happens if you're say coughing into your mask and it gets very wet at the front? You need to replace your mask. If you don't touch the front, you take them off from the sides, discard them, wash your hands, and put another mask on. And when you discard them, you would make sure that you discard them somewhere safe. That's right, in a bin、uh, that is covered. Yes, that's right. I wouldn't even say asymptomatic, but 
pre-symptomatic, meaning uh -huh. it's a few days before they develop symptoms themselves. And so when you go back and you interview them, oftentimes they say, well, actually I wasn't mm. feeling very well. So it's, it's this pre-symptomatic phase or mildly symptomatic phase. Having said that, it is possible, and we do have some case reports of truly asymptomatic people that are that can infect, but we don't believe that they play a major um, role in transmission. The important number of days has to do with what we call the incubation period, the time that you are infected to the time that you develop symptoms. We believe that most people will show symptoms five or six days after they are actually infected. What we look for is we look for case pairs. So if I'm a case and you are one of my contacts, then we follow you for a certain number of time to determine how long it takes for you to develop symptoms. So we are constantly looking at data that's coming from countries. And as of right now, we, we feel very confident um, that 14 days is the right upper bound. We are, we are learning about what this virus can do in different countries. You know, there's a lot of cases in China um, and there's some colder climates there. Um, I was in Beijing recently, but I was also in uh, Guangzhou which is more southern part of the country, which was much warmer. And so you do see transmission. Um, it's too early to say if temperature, in terms of outside temperature, has anything to do with virus circulation. Um, but we need to prepare ourselves that this virus can transmit between people anywhere that it goes. Um, there was a really big uh, report that came out of China. Um, I think it was last week where it was looking at 55,000 cases. Mm. Um, I think it was 2% of those infected were among children. Um, and that's a very low number. Um, and that's important um, to know because in flu, for example, children are really important in transmitting this virus. But in COVID-19, they don't seem to be. Mm -hmm. We don't know why yet. And so that's a big point of uh, research. But even the children who are infected, many of them will have mild disease. A majority of people who are infected with COVID-19 will have a mild disease, which may actually include a mild form of pneumonia. Antibiotics will not work against COVID-19 because that's a virus, but I know that you could have a co-infection with a bacteria and an antibiotic may be helpful for that, but it won't actually uh, work against a virus. Please come back to the WHO website and look at what we have posted. There's new postings every day, um, whether there are situation reports, which gives you an overview of the latest cases and what WHO is doing. Um, there are myth busters, there are videos that can help you, teach you about, you know, like I said, how to wash your hands, how to make sure you wear masks appropriately, and, and many other things. But please do continually you know, read about this and look at the websites and, and make sure you have the latest information at hand.